Hello guys! Our next video is we're going to input the beginning balances of accounts receivable and accounts payable to QuickBooks. There are two ways to input those transactions. The first way is we are going to use the create invoices icon for accounts receivable or the enter bills icon for accounts payable if we only have a few transactions to input. But if we have a long list of winning balances, then it's better if we use the batch enter transactions feature in QuickBooks. This is my accounts receivable. It's actually a very long list, but the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to manually input one transaction. In the chart of accounts, QuickBooks has an automatic account called Opening Balance Equity. This Opening Balance Equity account is a contra account every time that we input any opening balance for any balance sheet account or income statement account. With accounts receivable, it will debit accounts receivable and it will credit the opening balance equity. Okay, so before we're going to create an invoice, we're first going to create a service item or a non-inventory item in the items and services icon. And we're going to map that one to the opening balance equity account. I will right click anywhere, new, and I will use service. The account name is opening balance equity or opening balance and then we're going to map the account to the opening balance equity account and we will make it non-taxable i will click ok all right so let's start i will click create invoices and then our first customer is 3j corporation The date is August 5 and the invoice number. We can disregard the other information. The terms is automatically net 30 as it was set up during the customer setup. We can disregard the quantity. The item code is opening balance. We can disregard the description and let's paste the amount. And this is non-taxable. I will save. I will click save here. We, we can also save and close or save a new. All right. So let's check the journal entry for this transaction. I will press control Y. This will show you the journal entry. Okay. So as you can see, the debit is accounts receivable and the credit is opening balance equity. There is no tax. It was non-taxable. Okay. I will click save and close. I'll go to our accounts receivable reports. I'll go to customer balance summary. All right. So this is the invoice that we entered for 3J Corporation. All right. So let's try the batch enter transactions method in QuickBooks. I'll click Accountant and then Batch Enter Transactions. So just like the entry for the opening balances of inventory, we need to make sure that the columns in QuickBooks is exactly the same as the columns that we have in our Excel file. So in our Excel file, we have the customer names, the invoice number, the invoice date, and the amount. Let's do the same in QuickBooks. The transaction type should be invoices and credit memos. And our account is accounts receivable. And let's customize the columns. Okay, so should be the name of the customer first. And then the invoice number. Move move this up. The invoice date and the amount. We're going to take out the terms. It's, it's automatically 30 as what we have set up for all of our customers. Let's remove. And the item should be opening balance, so we need that one there. Let's remove the other columns. Okay, so we can't remove. This are default, so we can't remove those. I will click OK. Okay, let's copy from Excel. 
But let's start on the second customer, second invoice. Scroll down, copy, and then paste to QuickBooks. All right, and then the item should be opening balance equity or opening balance. Right click and then copy down. And let's make everything non taxable. All right, so it's all non taxable. I will click save transactions. Click yes. So 1,362 transactions have been saved, but we have three transactions that needs to be corrected. We have three errors. Let's see. The first customer is not in the customer list. I will click quick add. And this one, Fuji, also not in the customer list. I will click quick add. These are not in our customer list. Okay, so I will click save transactions. Yes. Okay, so I will click close. This is our customer balance summary. And let's check if we have the same balance in our Excel file. So that's 12,698,409.38. Let's check. Okay, so it's exactly the same, 12,698,409.38 cents. So it means that we have successfully entered our opening balances for the accounts receivable. Next is we're going to input the beginning balances for our accounts payable. This is our accounts payable. It's a long list as well. I will first manually enter one transaction. So I will click enter bills. Copy the name of the vendor the vendor name okay and then the date is 7 15 and i will give you a tip about the dates if you're entering a transaction for the current year you can just input 7.15 and it will automatically give you the current year which is 2021 but if you're entering a transaction for the current month let's say september 15 you can just input 0. 0.15 and it will give you September 15, 2021, which is the current month. Okay, so I will go back to July 15 there. The reference number is this one. The amount due is this. Okay. And then the expense account that I'm going to use, which is actually not a an expense but an equity account is opening balance equity all right so the terms is automatically net 30 since it was set up during the vendor input i will click save and close let's check our accounts payable report reports vendors and payables and then vendor balance summary Okay, so it's there, 74,437.50. Okay, next is we're going to input the transactions using the batch enter transactions in QuickBooks. So accountant and then batch enter transactions. And now we're going to choose bills and bill credits. Let's check our columns in Excel. So we have the vendor name, the invoice date, the invoice number, and the amount. Let's do the same in QuickBooks. I'll click Customize Columns. So I'll move up the vendor name. Next is the date, invoice date, and then the reference number, the invoice number, and the, the amount. Okay. You can take out the terms. Anyway, it's automatically 30 days. The account. I'll move this up and I will remove bill due and the memo. I'll click OK. I will copy from Excel. I'll start on the second line. I'll click paste. We have a warning. Another bill credit already has number 5881361166, but we can just keep the number. I'll click OK. All right. 
So it's there. And then the account is opening balance equity. Copy down. All right. I will click Save Transactions and let's check if we have errors. Click Yes. We have 118 transactions that has been saved, but we have 34 transactions that needs to be corrected. So we have errors. I will click OK. To fix the error, I will use the reference number to search in the Excel file since we don't have the vendor name. Okay, find all. All right, so the transaction belongs to CRL. I will copy this and paste to QuickBooks and let's check. Okay, so the name is already in the customer list. So that's the reason why it was not accepted in the batch intertransactions. So we'll just add this and I will add V so that it will be different from the customer name. Quick add. And the second transaction also belongs to CRL. Okay, I will do the other transactions. All right, so those are the only transactions with errors. The other lines are only blank lines from the Excel file. I will click Save Transactions, click Yes. Okay, and I will disregard the other blank lines. I'll click Clear and then Close. And let's go to our Accounts Payable Report, Reports, Vendors and Payables, and then Vendor Balance Summary. Okay, let's check if we have the same balance with our Excel file. So the total balance is 4,242,432.82 cents. Let's check our Excel file. Close. Okay, so 4,242,432.82 cents. So it's exactly the same. So it means that we have successfully entered our accounts payable using the batch enter transactions in QuickBooks. And I will show you other accounts payable reports, reports and vendors and payable. So these are all your accounts payable reports. And we have this vendor balance detail. This report will show you all the individual invoices of the vendor regardless if it's already paid or unpaid. And this report will also give you the payment details for each invoice. All right. And then let's go to our aging report, vendors and payables and accounts payable aging detail. All right, so these are our current invoices. The next batch is one to 30 days overdue. All right, and then 31 to, 60, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days, and so on. Okay, and let's go to our accounts receivable report. So that's in reports, mm, customers and receivables, and, this, and then these are all our account receivable reports. Let's go to the customer balance detail. All right, so just like with the vendor balance detail, this report shows all the invoices of the customer, regardless if it's paid or unpaid. And this will also show you the payments and the credit memos. And then let's go to the aging report. We have current, and then we have one to 30 days. And scroll down until you get to the bottom of the report. We have the 31 to 60 days and then the 90 days and above. All right, there. So those are our accounts receivable and accounts payable reports. For more QuickBooks tutorials, tips, and tricks, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.